What's going on YouTube? I'm back again with another video. This is actually an old drawing of the video I had on my main channel that got taken down. So I'm re-editing it, putting it back up with some new commentary. Uh, Anime Kid is on the com guest commentary with me. So you already heard his voice. He's on the uh, Bucky O'Hara video, Thundercats video. Some people... Some people are taking a shine to that Thunder, the Thundercats video. They actually like that we go off into tangents and just rant <laughs> like two mad men. Oh, Lord. But it's fun, though, man. So what do you remember about the, the Samurai piece of cats besides them delivering pieces? Uh, once again, for this one, nothing much, really. Like, it's kind of big. I remember them, like, um... And there was, I know there was a whole bunch of them, though. Or yeah. Something like that. It was, they was almost like the Power Rangers, to be honest. Not Power Rangers, but... Yeah, they was almost like the Power Rangers. Because you had Guido, you had, you had Speedy Guido, and a girl. I can't think of her name. And then you had then you, you had other... You had four of... No, other three other cats that lived where they was at, but they did other things. And then you had a New York section of the Senra piece of cats. See, reason why I think you would like it if you watch it or get the comic book. I think they have the manga version of the, of this. You would like it because it's anime style. Mm-hmm. It's very anime style. And they, like, they basically, like, the cartoon storyline was before its time. A lot of cartoons that we had was like, way before its time. And I think a lot reason why a lot of people didn't catch on to it because they were cats and... Mm -hmm. It was animated, not anime style. It was an real anime style. It was funny. It had its funny moments, and the only thing about it though, it remind it probably reminded a lot of people of Thundercats and TMT mixed together because Thundercats, you had they were cats. They basically were humanoid cats. They had a a, a station where. The fucking station was a big giant ass panther or a cat or whatever you want to call it. But the station in Samurai Pizza Cat was like a pizza parlor. But in later episodes, they had like this big, the lucky cat that they called the one eyed cat. Mm -hmm. That was like a station that had like a super tank. Like it was almost like, like I said, it was TMT meets Thundercats in a way. But mm -hmm. it was good to me though. It, it was, you know what it was? You would definitely like it. In the later seasons, it's like it's three cartoons mixed together, and you, I know you like this cartoon. It's TMT, Thundercats, and Gundam. Ah, yeah. It got it, it hit the Gundam element in it, so yeah, you would like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got. I still gotta get you on Gundam. I gotta get you on. Um, I think okay, like this, this because there's always um, there's always a split. Between um, between Gundam fans, I noticed, and like I gotta figure out which one you are right now, cause they got the majority of Gundams always have that serious tone, like it's a war or uprising or something to use the Gundams to fight. But then you also got the G Gundam crowd, and that's like if you if you turn the Gundams into Dragon Ball Z, that's basically exactly what it is. And it's like it's they go through all the cartoony and. And like funny things, like 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 uh, one of the things that um me and one of my friends was talking about who like like watching the show too is that in G Gundam, like um they would just talk regular, like they'll just say regular sentences and just start screaming out of nowhere. It, like it, like it's almost like we call their like the bipolar disorder. <laughs> they'll just be so calm and then they'll just start yelling. Like that, kind of. It was almost like it had. So, like, for example, like to give an example to new like, people that don't even know about Gundam, or basically you're explaining how it is in Soul Eater, like how Maka and Soul can be chilling, and Blair come out of nowhere, and they just be talking to him, and then Blair show up, and then Maka just start screaming. Or he just break out into a nosebleed. I know what you're saying. I think right. the, the, the funny thing about it, though. My, my my one of my best friends, the one that got he got killed. But mm -hmm. I used to go to his house. I used to watch the animated versions of 
the the anime version of Dragon Ball Z. Like I watched the Brawly series, the Brawly series in '94. Mm-hmm. I watched the Brawly series, the, the Cell Saga, uh, and then I watched Gundam. I played, I watched Mega Man, mm-hmm. and then we used to go to the toy store and buy Gundams. Yeah, I used to build the Gundams. We used to sit there and build the Gundams. I had like five Gundams that I I took and built them. And, like, mm-hmm. I was never in deep into Gundams because Gundam almost, like, almost reminded me of Transformers and it almost reminded me of Rowan Warriors. Yeah, yeah. That's another show we got to get on, too, Rowan Warriors, because that's, that's something that could be rebooted. Like, you know, Japanese, the Japanese anime um, that came out back in the 90s. It was on the original Toonami block. Yeah. I think a lot of people forgot about that. Cause it wasn't as catchy. Cause it was too, like, it, it, like again, like I said, it, it was not a lot of cartoons came out at the wrong time. Like Warriors of Virtue came out at the wrong time. Teen Girls came well, not too long ago. The Teen Girl came out. You had uh, and like you said, Gundam was out at the time. You had Voltron that was hot at the time. You had Power Rangers that was hot at the time. Transformers was going into what G two at the time. Was it even G two or G three? I don't think it was. I know you're talking about. It was like when it turned to the anime style, like the Transformers Armada, and then Transformers Energon, and then yeah, it came Transformers out, this, and it was. It crazy. came out at the wrong time. Yeah, Ron Worms was just basically a filling episode, filling cartoon that was in between Gundam and Transformers. On the because. Mm-hmm. No, it was actually between, I think it was uh, Gundam. Dragon Ball Z. It was between Dragon Ball Z and Gundam, actually. Like, yeah. it came in between those two. Yeah, like, Speed Racer was between uh, Dragon Ball Z and Sun and Moon for me. Because Sun and Moon used to be the shit. Oh, yeah. Like, now that I watch it, boy, America, America chopped that up real good, too. They did the same thing to Dragon Ball Z at first, but Sailor Moon, boy, they tore it up. And I understand why, because, like, um, you know, the cultural difference between Japan and... America, like some things are considered acceptable and not like, like I watch Sailor Moon now and I'm looking at it, it's funny to me because like you think about it, that's a 12 year old girl. Yeah. That whole thing, she's 12 years old and like just straight up, like in the Japanese version, I'm sorry, she's just straight up sexified. Exactly. And then it was like that with Dragon Ball, it was like that with Dragon Ball because you remember where they, <laughs> it was Boma yeah. and and Goku, that was the first time Goku seen a, a vagina, basically. I'm yeah. not going to say uh, the P word, because some <laughs> kids do watch, my, watch, my ch- watch this channel, which they shouldn't, but... Um, but it's called the word that shall not be spoken. Yeah, word. the forbidden area. <laughs> that was the first time he lifted up her skirt, and that's when the first time... I think that's the first time she socked that nigga. Like, she socked mm-hmm. it. Like, she was sleeping, he didn't know, like, what it was, and he was trying to see if they had the same genital parts, and he found out, he found out that day. Yeah, oh, did you ever see the, um, like, this is, like, in the uncut version of Dragon Ball, like, when he was a little kid? Like, um, this girl was trying to steal Goku's Dragon Balls, he had two of them, right? And she knew it, but she was pretending to be a sidekick, so she was like, I see that you have two like, like, like he said, a set of balls that you keep very close to. Goku was like, "Yeah, yeah, you're right," and they're very, they're very dear to you. Goku was like, "Yeah, yeah," and he's like, uh, he like dropped yeah, his I pants. See the balls. I don't remember that one. <laughs> he dropped his pants, and I was like dying off of that. Yeah, I remember that funny. one. Even Dragon Ball Z, they, I'm glad they did the car version of it. To be honest, mm-hmm. now because. Mm-hmm. The whole Trunk Saga, they showed when when Voma was re like rehabbing Vegeta and his wounds and stuff. Mm-hmm. They actually showed them having sex, like in the, in the uncut version of Dragon Ball. And I don't think the kids today would like. I mean, come on, they watch SpongeBob. I'm sure they can deal with that. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. You got SpongeBob. He's always walking around in the throne. Patrick, when he takes his shorts off, he's naked. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. And then you got Squidward. He has a limp dick as a note for a nose. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. That's why every time I see Squidward, that's what I think of. A limp dick that's on his nose. Mm-mm-mm. Because it's... <laughs> This is the car. This is, hey, it's the creators, man. It's, then you got Cartoon Network. They got this fucking. Oh, they make me mad sometimes. Like Cartoon Network is not Cartoon Network anymore. It's just need mm-hmm. to change the name. Like they got this stupid ass cartoon called Uncle Grandpa. I don't even watch that. I don't. Even, I change the channel. What type of message are you sending? You got an uncle name. You got Uncle Grandpa. So basically, you telling people if the kid is smart enough. About incest. Yeah, basically. I'll tell you a show that's actually that two shows that I actually initially thought were stupid, but turned out to be actually kind of funny once you actually sat down and tried to get the humor. Um, the first one is Adventure Time. Yeah, Adventure Time was actually awesome, and that's not a cartoon for kid at all. No, it's not. Especially when you got Bender in any of your cartoons, like the guy who or the guy who does Bender's voice, you know it's bound to be something other than kid cartoons you yeah jake jake and uh and sin is like hilarious together mm-hmm. they exactly like, they're like the modern day scooby-doo and and shaggy in a way yeah and the other show i have to say is um the amazing world of gun gumball i haven't like, watched I, that yet you haven't i initially hated that show but they actually they actually did some jokes that I thought were actually funny, like like the way they presented it. You know, there's another cartoon I, I couldn't get into, and it's, it's fucked up because it's a black creator. Mm. Uh, it's Boondocks. Yeah. They actually coming out with another season, so. Yep. It was another show I couldn't get into. Like, I watched a couple episodes that were funny. I think it was the Thugnificence uh, episode. Oh, yeah. And there was a couple of ones. Like I did, I just realized that Samuel Jackson played the voice. Uh, he played the white. He played the white guy, right? It's funny though, because I want to see because they they openly hate BET on the Boondocks. Yeah, which is funny to me. And I always always wondered. I was like, I wonder if Boom if they'll ever try to pick up Boondocks for like the the show in syndication. Or whatever, but I don't even think there's no amount of money to pay that um that the creator of Boondocks would ever sell the rights to um BT for, cause he cause they openly bash them every chance they get. The thing about BT is not even black entertainment television anymore, because all you see is light skinned people. I ain't got nothing against light skinned people, but you try to look this 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 perspective that uh black mm-hmm. actors, dark skinned actors are not what it is anymore it's you got just as many good dark skinned actors as it is light skinned people and the one assistant part is not the same anymore uh i know we're going off on the tangent but uh, you shouldn't have known this was happening but yeah one assistant part is not the same anymore the game it was good the first season now they need to end it because it's getting retarded now i think that's yeah, the main, way that's they main that's their main money grab right now yeah they took gold and, like, you know, usually people say they took they took shit and turned into gold. They turned gold and started turning into shit. That's basically what it did. Like, the storylines are stupid. They don't, nothing, like, most of the episodes never really go anywhere either in the game anymore. It's just kind of like, it's kind of just like, okay, well, here you go. Just enjoy this for a minute. And then, whatever. And now they got uh, my wife and kid. They play the reruns of that. Yeah. They got Scandal. That should have never been canceled, though. Um, my wife and kids. Yeah, but you know that's the Wayne Brothers. You know. Yeah, they don't Hollywood. last. They never get a. They never get a final episode. They just kind of. They just cut them off, like Wayne Brothers and shit. I mean, they get great shows. They have the funny thing is they have great shows and everybody remembers them. But it's just like they never give the Waynes the common courtesy to have a final episode, except they, for a Living Color. They get the short end of the stick all the time. Yeah. Um, they play Full House, not Full House, but uh, Family Matters now. Yeah. Uh, but, I don't know, man. It's just that it's not with BET when we used to watch BET, yo. This is just... Yeah, BET. Remember the music, man. the video countdown before 106 and Park was really popular? Yeah, the they did basement. The... Yep. Yeah. Then hits. they had, um, what was it, Rat City? 
Yeah. You had, they, they had a lot. And you had BET and Cut. Everybody know about BET and Cut. Especially oh, God. In the, Don't especially get me started in the on age that. group of the twenties, in the late like what, mid twenties? Cause I'm twenty five. I I remember I, BT Uncut like it was yesterday. I ain't gonna lie, I was BT Uncut was at its height of popularity when I was in the seventh or eighth grade. Yeah, because Nelly I, had a video on there. You remember Nelly had the um, tip tip drill video on oh, there. Oh, tip drill, that one, that was my favorite. Now I love Nelly for that video. <laughs> Nelly's my home before tip drill video. Shoot, that's how I view it. <laughs> that was a great video. Audio. I know what you said. But the other thing, I said the other thing, like we were talking about Land Before Time. You know, another TV show they should just bring back is Dinosaurs. Yeah. They're not going to bring that back. They killed them off in the final episode. But the final episode was actually what they explained to us in the history books of how the the, the, the dinosaur age ended. Like, it was a sad episode, to be honest. Yeah, they don't even show it um on TV no more after that. Like, when they show the syndications or anything like that, they don't really show it. That's like an optional thing. That was a sad, it was a sad ending to be honest, because it was like the the big bang almost. Yeah, they just all went, and you know the another reason why they're not gonna do it. The person who did the babies, the same guy who did Elmo, and we all know about them child molestation allegations that he got. So yeah, that's not happening. I mean, you gonna always need somebody else to do the baby voice. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But the, the, the dude that played the um, Sinclair's balls, he the dude um, that played um, Dermot Helmsley. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. Did you know he was gay? Dermot sure, Helmsley was gay. <laughs> yeah, he was a gay actor. I had no idea. They said um, they said the same thing about Uncle Phil. Like, I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know, but Uncle Phil like he could have been one. And then again, he looked like he could have been a type that was in the white woman. Mm-hmm. He looked like he was into the forbidden fruit of the black culture. <laughs> but to me, like, I don't understand why people make it such a big deal. Like, okay, he's gay. I'm like, so what does that have to do with me? He still was Uncle Phil. Still at the end a of the great day. actor. Yep, exactly. Like, they was, like, for years they were saying LeBar Burton was gay, but I never seen it. I just thought LeBar Burton was uh, a white man trapped in a black guy's body. LeVar Burton can strike me as a mama's boy because he real he got a feminine feel to him, but I don't think he's gay. Who? LeVar Burton. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to think who he is again. I'm trying to... Read the Rainbow. What do you play? Read the Rainbow. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, him. And he played uh, Kunta and Roots. Yep. He played in Star Trek, too. That's how he got his big... That's what sent his career yeah. with Star Trek. Yeah, he was a dude with the, with the, with the visor things, right? Yep. And then he played um your boy off of, um he played he did the voice of your boy in um Captain Planet, the black dude. Oh yeah, yeah, he sure enough did. I mean, uh, that's something. That, that's a lot of things about Hollywood we can go into. Like a lot of actors they say are gay. Uh, Will Smith, I believe he swing. I don't know, but I don't, I'm not sure exactly. Um, like, I can't say, I mean, because I don't know him, so I can't say for sure he isn't or he is, but I don't I don't really see him being that type of way. I'm sorry, but his first movie, he played that role a little too great. Talking about when he was the gay guy? Yeah, and then, yeah. like, the whole, like, everybody always talk about the scene when he gets... <laughs> When he getting destroyed in the in the in the bedroom, I'm like, yo, why y'all keep talking about that that scene? Like that shit's not even cool, man. Mm-mm. I'm like, and to get back to Lavar Burton, he was actually on the episode. He did like a guest appearance on the TV show, The Big Bang Theory. Mm-hmm. That's actually a funny ass TV show, yo. Mm-hmm. The dude that plays Sheldon is gay. Sheldon from where? Uh, he played in Big Bang Theory. I'm, I'm trying to okay. remember the movie he played in. I can't think of any other movie he played in because I don't really remember him from anything else. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, he's in, in that TV show. He played a dude that um was um in what's that fucking Roseanne show. He was uh not Becky. It's Becky, right? Not Becky. Um, Darlene. He was Darlene's mm-hmm. boyfriend. Oh, okay, him. I know what you're talking about now. He played in a TV show with him, but it's, it's a good. Sh- it's on WB. Come on, right at the um, two and a half men. Okay. Speaking of two and a half men. Oh God. It sucked that the Charlie Sheen left. Yeah. That they let Charlie Sheen go. Well, he wasn't getting along with the other cast, but. No, you no, know, they say one monkey don't stop a show. I guess you. Ashley Kutcher, I don't like Ashley Kutcher. Mm. Yeah, it's just not. It's, it would just wouldn't be the same. It's not. Whatever. It's not even that it wouldn't be the same. It could have did the show without Ashley Kutcher. It could have just been John Cryer, Angus before he went <clears> nuts. <throat> and the mom, the mom was funny and shit. And then Birder, Birder was actually Birder made the show. Mm-hmm. Because you had John, you had Charlie, you had Alan, and then you had um, Jake when he came over. And then it was the mom had her; she had her comedic role, Judith, and then you had um, and Berta. Berta just really made it, to be honest. Mm-hmm. She was just a wise cracking maid. Like she reminded me of the Jeffersons with um, what's the lady name? I can't think of her name. She played in two two seven. Um, sure, I can't either. I never really watch. I don't, I haven't really watched Two and a Half Men like that. I catch it when I when I when it's on, but I never like really watched it faithfully. But I watch it faithfully. It's like the TV shows catch me, and then it's like it's cool. You know what BT messed up, and they could have made a lot of money <laughs> off of. They should have picked up Tyler Perry shows. I think I think um I think they tried Tyler Perry, but then like um. I think they think he said they tried to change too much of his stuff or something like that, or they yeah. like they like they didn't. It was basically them trying to take what his his stuff, but like they wasn't gonna let him give the message that he wanted to give. Yeah, the positive black message. Everything he does have a, a strong positive message, even though he does mid the he dresses like a woman, but it it always give you that message that like yo, that's not cool. House of Pain was a great TV show. Which show? House of Pain. It was all right. I I didn't like the comedy myself, or whatever. I didn't like how it, like the delivery of it. Or See, whatever. it wasn't your type of comedy. That type of comedy was. Uh, I don't know if you watched Sanford the Sun. It, it had a yeah. Sanford the Sun good times twang to it. Yeah. It was good for me. I mean, the last season you probably caught it. Did you catch it around the early seasons, or did you catch it around the the last? The end of the I actually like the last seasons of House of Pain, but the earlier seasons I wasn't too fond of. I really didn't like the last season of House of Pain because they left off with that big ass cliffhanger, and then come to find out that was the final episode ever. What was the? Yeah, because it got canceled. But um, I forget what that last episode was. The last episode what? was the anniversary dinner, and then Miranda left Calvin basically, mm. and he's stuck in the house crying. He threw the fucking the roses at the door, and mm-hmm. it left off with a, a big-ass cliffhanger, and I'm wishing that it would come back, but we know it ain't going to come back, because, I don't know, man. And then, mm-hmm. Meet the Browns is funny. Yeah, Logan, my girl Logan Browning, oh my God, her fine, sexy self. Other thing about her, she, she kind of, uh, I think she tried too hard. Um, but, you know, she, you know, I think that was like, I'm not going to say, but like, you know, I mean, I didn't, I don't know. Like, I think she did pretty well, but um, what's that show now? Hit the floor. Oh, my goodness. She's the reason why I watch it. She, Logan Brown's the reason why I watch that show, Hit the Floor. But the thing about Whatever. it, though, the way she played that role in Hit the Floor is like, she probably was really, like, she probably really liked that in real life. I don't know. I think she's kind of cool in real life. I don't know. I hear, I hear I, a lot of people say she's really nice or whatever, but... She might be. Later. She might be. Like, let's say Raven Simone is the coolest chick you ever meet in prison. But, hey, yeah. that crushed me when she turned out to be gay now. Man. Everybody, you grew up in Raven Simone. From the Cosby yeah. show to that so Raven. Yeah. To College Road Trip. Cheetah yeah. Girls. <laughs> Martin Lawrence in it, yeah. <laughs> Come on, they, like, 
no dude can never lie. I said he never watched the Cheetah Girls. Everybody watched the Cheetah Girls because of Raven Simone and 3 W in it. Mm-hmm. And Keely Williams was in it, too. And You ever heard that song from Keely Williams? I, that's, this is getting way off Sunday because now this really, this really absolutely positively has nothing to do with anime or cartoons or... Um, but it's Disney, though. It's Disney, it's Disney yeah. orientated because... Did you ever hear her song Spectacular, Keely Williams? Nah. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was like, the, the, to me, the song was, I understood what it was. Yeah. But I like it for whole different reasons than probably what she put it out for. Because to me, it, that is pure comedy. It's yeah. like, it's like, it's basically a song about her meeting some dude at the club and having a one night stand. That's basically the premise of the song. And she's talking about how like she doesn't remember she doesn't remember anything. She was drunk, and um, and she doesn't even remember the guy's name. But she just remembers that the um, sex was spectacular, and the the song is called Spectacular. If you ever get a chance, go on YouTube and just look it up. Say Spectacular Kiwi Williams. But some people but, was talking about something. I heard about that song. They, they thought she was talking about Spectacular from Pretty Ricky. No, nah, nah, that's that's the song. But no, nah, I wasn't talking about Spectacular. And it was basically her trying to break out from the Disney image, which, like, like you know, because she didn't want to be known as the Cheetah Girl. She was, like, what, 25 at the time when the song came out? Yeah. But Whatever. the thing so about it, though, the, her adult. when they played Cheetah Girls, they were playing it back-to-back, and then, like, in between, like, you had to catch it at the right time. You remember when Disney Channel redid The Circle of Life? I hated that. I hate it. I hate, they they did a lot of that. They redid a lot of songs. They got they took a lot of timeless classics. And Nickelodeon is also the biggest um, perpetrator of this crime. But they take they take timeless classics and just completely ruin them. As a matter of fact, um, I think Kids Bop does less damage to good songs than what Disney and Nickelodeon has done to classics. Like, like I was so pissed when I heard them do the Circle of Time. And I'm like, how can you take and disrespect Elton John like that with his gay ass? <laughs> how can you disrespect him like that? He might Elton be, John makes some good songs. Though. Yeah, you, he might be gay, but he was dope. <laughs> him and Phil Collins at that time were the kings of the Disney soundtrack. Yes. And then, um, but but what I'll tell you what pissed me off. Remember, you ever heard of the show Victorious or whatever? Yeah. With Victoria Justice and all of them, and yeah, the, I mean the girl, one of them girls, I forget her name. She's fine as hell, all get out or whatever in there. But um, what pissed me off was that episode. They did a special, and they was in prison, and they they sung a song, and they had the nerve, the audacity. It was a Michael Jackson song, right? Yeah, they took "I Want You <laughs> Back," the timeless classic, the song that made Michael and the Jackson Five famous in the first place, and just butchered it. Like, 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 Butcher wasn't even the word. They just, like, they took a piss and crap on it. That's how I felt they did with that song. And, I mean, I know it's not the singer's fault or whatever, because they're just doing what, what's in, what they're obligated to do contractually. I blame the Disney producers who said, we can get these rights from Michael Jackson and his family, because they know they need money right now. And we're going to just take this, and we're going to get them to sing it and ruin what Michael Jackson did. That's how I feel they did it. That's basically what they did. They just pulled a full-time jag and said, fuck you. Mm-hmm. But basically. just like when um when they took Raven Simone, when, okay, I don't know why anybody takes Disney's singer contract seriously anyways to begin with, but when they got Raven Simone to take Stevie Wonder song Superstitious, and it, once again, it got butchered. It was... And it's not the fact that it's it's not the fact that okay they could they probably can sing but the fact that you can't compare you will never be able to compare to Michael Jackson you'll never be able to compare to Stevie Wonder like leave it alone when you get songs like that leave it alone do something original at least uh, as much as I hated Hannah Montana at least she did original stuff I can say that the thing about Disney with these stars they start off young uh, and then they wind up doing some crazy shit as they get older. Um, mm-hmm. Britney Spears. Every, when Britney Spears came out, every mm-hmm. nigga was in love with her. No black, no black guy in the universe. Yes, we're black. <laughs> no black dudes in the universe. We listen to our rap and 
R and B and all that shit. But Britney Spears came on. We listened to her. We listened to Backstreet Boys. We listened to NSYNC. And then when I hated Chris, NSYNC. I couldn't stand them. And then when Christina Aguilera came out, it was a whole different Horrible. story. The genie in the bottle. I mean, it was around that time. And she came out around that time when Aaliyah died, I think. Yeah. And I know we off the subject, but when Aaliyah died, yo, I think every dude. Aaliyah was every guy and every young dude crush, yo. Aaliyah yeah. Was just, Aaliyah was just that, that person, yo. That's the only reason why I watched Romeo Must Die to this day. Aaliyah was sexy as shit in Romeo Must Die, especially when she cried, yo. Mm-hmm. And I she was, like, was in her little. I was thinking. Queen of the Dam was cool too. I'm not. Yeah. Gonna, I'm not even gonna sit here and hate on Queen of the Dam, but Queen of the Dam was good. Mm-hmm. But it's just, it's just sad that she had to go like that. Yeah, and then at like a month or two later, she died. After the movie was released, and it was like saying it was like a whole big coincidence, you know. Mm-hmm. Let's get back to cartoons, but uh, that yeah. bad shit was fucked up. Uh, yeah, Disney is a big perfect. They just take shit and just fuck it up. Mm-hmm. And I, I well, don't know. It was my Disney contract, but go ahead. Sometimes I don't mind it. But when you take a classic like Circle, I really have a problem when they took Circle of Life. Because every time you hear Circle of Life, you think of Lion King. Yep. And then when you think of Lion King, you think about Scar. Scar killing his brother. And yeah, I know you've seen a meme, the um, little things that are going around saying this is how the, the whole dark skin versus light skin war started. Yeah. And, I mean, that was funny, but nah, like, when you was younger and when you seen Scar kill his own brother and then Simba was blamed mm-hmm. for the death of his dad, like, mm-hmm. it wasn't not a one dry eye in the movie theater. No. Because you mm-hmm. felt bad for Simba, and then you, almost, mm-hmm. you also felt bad for Simba because he was dead, and then when you realize James Earl Jones was the voice of Simba, which is yeah. also the voice of Darth Vader in the original Star mm-hmm. Wars uh, movies, but um, yeah, it was crazy. I'll tell you, there's only one other movie that ever had me like close to crying, and it's recent or whatever. If you haven't seen, you gotta watch it. Um, Best Man Holiday. I haven't seen it. My that, grandma, my grandma told me it was like it was one of them tear jerkers. What happened? Oh, yeah. Did somebody die of cancer or tears. something? You said what? Did somebody die of cancer or something like that? Um, you, can't really spo- you just gotta watch it. The best thing I don't spoil, want to spoil you, can spoil you gotta watch it. You can spoil it for me if I still watch it. That's if I watch it, because I don't even watch movies like that. I mean, it's not the fact that, that like, you know, somebody had the, like, you know, like, the fact that somebody had cancer in the movie. It was the fact that, um, it's the fact how they built everything up on that. How, like, they showed her when, um, they showed her trying to get all the friends together to point where they're trying to get um where they're trying to get relationships fixed again they're trying to um like you know there's she she's showing how like how at first she's content with it and then something happens it kind of almost breaks her and then she comes back to it and then they just go from there like they just keep building and building on and when you finally get to that part or whatever it's like Christ, i'm trying to explain it the best way i can without like, no, I, got, you know, I got what you're saying like basically but, it was the one friend that tried to fix everything yeah, it's kind of like yeah, it's kind of like that, and they just build so much onto it where you have no choice but to get emotionally attached to what's going on in that story. See, movies like that will never get attached emotionally attached to because one of them, people call me fucking cold hearted. Uh, I'm not cold hearted. I just see things for what it is, and um, mm-hmm. that's why my, one of my homies called me Bruce Banner because I'm mild manner one minute, then I hop the fuck out on you. Um. You ever watch Scrubs? Yeah. Remember the episode when Laverne died? Yeah. That was another Terry Jerry. Yeah. Because if you watch the whole season from the beginning with Laverne to the end when she's about to die, that mm-hmm. that episode sucked you in, man. 
That was the only time you felt emotional. That's the only time I felt emotional again since I seen Lion King, yo. I still get emotional when I see Lion King. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Now we're gonna get over it because it's a lot. It's a lot of kids out there, not just black kids or whatever you want to say. Any type of race of kids, like anybody that lost a dad when he was younger, felt for that. Felt for somebody at that point. Yeah. If you can pull that type of element in a movie or a cartoon or a television mm-hmm. show, whatever the fuck it is, mm-hmm. you're you're great at what you do because it's hard to suck people in emotions on certain shit like that. Like, mm-hmm. like I'm saying, like when Laverne died in the scrubs, like that was like, I was we was at work watching it. Like we in the lunchroom. That's the time I was working for Stable. We watching it and we like, yo. Mm-hmm. Laverne about to die? She got hit by a car. She was going to get her two fix and damn, she begging there. And then the, mm-hmm. it was the I think what really sucked everybody in was Carla because Carla didn't want to face the simple yeah. fact that Laverne was dying. Yeah, exactly. I'll tell you something else that uh, what you call it, like well since we're speaking of Scrubs, like to me it was it was a good show and everybody did it, but it was it was underrated too in a way. Cause Cause like, it was like, like a parody, uh, parody of um, ER. Yeah, exactly. But it was like what had me cracking up. Like some of my favorite gags in there was like when, um, like you know, when um, Turk and JD would be playing basketball. Yeah. And and uh, JD could never get the trash talking right. He would just say some like some really mean stuff to somebody. He thought about some, like the one guy would be like, "Yeah, you can't handle me, boy." He said, "Yeah, well, I heard your sister's taking drinking up again." Like, it was just, like, stuff like that that had me laughing. Uh, he would really hurt their feelings when it's actually true. Like, Dr. Cox also made the, uh, the TV show, too. The dude that played yeah. Dr. Cox. Um, you know what Scrubs remind... You know what other TV show that remind me of Scrubs in a way of JD and Turk? Um, Psych. Mm-hmm. Psych is like that. Psych is... Yeah. Reminds me of JD and Turk. And it would actually would have been cool if JD and Turk would have turned up in the episode of Psych. Oh, yeah, that would have been good. Just because Sean and Gus remind me so much of them. And it, it's sad to me that Psych is on the eighth season. It's their final season. Yeah. They probably just don't have nothing else to do. Sometimes you just got to know when you when to leave on a high note. <laughs> I mean, they have an eight, eight season. That's a good TV show for them to have eight seasons to begin with. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a funny show. It's still funny to this day. It's like it hasn't. Even the filler episodes that they have are funny. But, um, I don't know, man. It's, and then, like, it was some old cartoons that was just like that. It was like a character that you just got attached to and then he just died. Dragon Ball Z was like that. Oh, yeah, when Vegeta died, the, when Vegeta died the first time, I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, I was upset on that one. And then, like, we got used to Goku dying every week. Yeah, Goku died after every guy. But it was just so sad with Vegeta, because when, when Vegeta, like, because, like, like, once again, it's how they built it up. They had Vegeta where he was like, I'm finally going to get revenge on Frieza. And then when Frieza finally killed him, and he told that story to um Goku about, like, how he was and everything, about how Frieza took him from his father at a young age and always threatened to kill him, and then... If he didn't do what he said, and then he killed him anyways, along with everybody else on the planet, and how he never got a chance to be anything but the killer that he became. It, it kind of like it kind of sucked you in emotionally, I think, with that one. I like then with Krillin. We got Krillin was just like the comic relief. Ken, Krillin was the Kenny of Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, exactly. It is funny though if you watch um, Team Four Star uh, when they do their um, Dragon Ball Z abridged. I think it's like it's real good because um because they take what was in Dragon Ball Z and they make jokes on like like kind of like the obvious stuff and they just like it's like they blow it out of proportion like in this one they have Krillin just always getting punked out every chance every chance they get it was like it was always the the, the three amigos that always it was the four amigos that always got killed it was even Tien mm-hmm. Yabcha Galsu. Uh, Chaosu and Krillin. They was always the first to go. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, it was. Um, yeah, it was, that is crazy. The, what to me, what what kind of Dragon Ball Z's downfall was 
was the fact that Goku had to kill every single main bad guy. To me, I hate I hate storylines where every bad guy except for one or two um, has to be sat. The main character has to save him from him. Like to me, Vegeta should have took somebody out somewhere in there. Like Vegeta didn't take out Frieza, he didn't take out Cell, he didn't take out Majin Buu. And he didn't do anything in the GT series, so it was like, but Vegeta was the most popular character. Well, Vegeta helped take out what you call one of the dragons. Um, what dragon was that? Oh, yeah, Omega Shinra. It was Omega Shinra. When they both, uh, was Super mm-hmm. Saiyan 4 Gogeta, or was it Vegeta? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Where which one it was. But, mm-hmm. um, speaking of Dragon Ball, like, I think Piccolo had his own, Piccolo had his role. The best villain of the whole Dragon Ball series, it has to be Bajin Buu. Yeah, because he was the most powerful. Like he was like the most ruthless out of all them, because he killed indiscriminately and without reason. Majin That's what Bu- made Majin Buu so bad. Majin Buu was the carnage of Dragon mm-hmm. Ball Z. Because mm-hmm. if you get into the or like, then you know, we hopping into Marvel comics now. If you get into the origin of, of uh, 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 what the fuck is his name? Carnage. He's mm-hmm. a baby of the symbiote of Venom. Mm-hmm. In the bloodstream of a serial killer. And mm-hmm. Spider-Man at the time, that cartoon was also a dark cartoon because mm-hmm. you had two brain eaters. Yeah. Venom wasn't really so much of a brain. They didn't show him so much as a brain eater. But Carnage was always played that psychopath, psychopath role. And yep. the dude that the host that of Carnage was a psychopath. And in the comic mm-hmm. books it was even even more gorier because I think there's a couple comics that was banned over here that was so bad that mm-hmm. Carnage his symbol would like go in your nose and just eat your brain. Dang. Like Carnage was just bent on killing people. Cause if the story of Carnage it was he killed, um, he was sent to a boy's home early because he killed his grandma. Mm-hmm. He ki- He threw her down a flight of steps. He killed the family pet. I think he mm-hmm. killed one of his cousins. Uh, they sent him to an old boy's school for a uh, correctional. He burned that down to the ground. Mm-hmm. And then he was raping and killing people. And then he got locked in the um, cell with Eddie Brock. And then the Venom symbiote came and all mm-hmm. that. And then he became carnage through a cut in his, his bloodstream. Mm-hmm. And she just became the monster we know today is Carnage. I mean, Carnage mm-hmm. and Venom was the original two symbiotes that we really cared about. Now they got Toxin and uh, mm-hmm. what's the other one? It's another one. I can't think of her. Think yeah, of her they name. Have, Venom has like eight kids, so including Carnage. So, But Carnage is basically his own person, though. Carnage is... That's fucking psychopath. That's what he is. He's a killer. Yeah. Carnage is his name. Carnage. That's exactly... His character is Carnage. Like, mm-hmm. you can't look at Venom, because Venom always was not... Venom is Superman... Not Superman, but Venom and Spider-Man teamed up a couple times. Mm-hmm. Against Carnage. That's how badass Carnage is. Mm-hmm. Carnage... I can see Carnage being... Car- Carnage is the Joker of the Marvel of the Marvel uh, universe. Yep, that's why they kind of avoid him in all the movies and stuff too. Because like, in order to do that, like you would have to, they would have to really have some like some kind of dark thing like with it. It would have to water Carnage now, and that, and that, that would make it suck. Unless they make a rated R. Spider-Man, which will never happen. They will never happen because it's still, like, you got that kid's audience. Like, with mm-hmm. wrestling, John Cena will always be there because he's drawing the money from the kid <laughs> audience. Like, he's the modern-day Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. And I, yep. Yeah, and you know, they won't get into wrestling because I can go in on how WWE is sucking right now and it's not even... And we know they won't get into TNA. TNA is a sinking ship. They just need to be bought by it right now. Um, but it's a lot of characters in Marvel that can't will never get a screen a screenplay, or they would have to work around. If they really told the real backstory of Ant Man, they wouldn't be having this movie. Yeah, I mean, 
realistic. They could. The only way I can see them doing Carnage is if they put him in a Deadpool movie. Because Deadpool is going to be rated R. Like when they do Deadpool. It has There's to no- be. Because even in um, the Ultimate Spider-Man, he's like cracking wise jokes that you won't understand. Mm-hmm. Carnage is, I'm not Carnage, but Deadpool is Deadpool. Deadpool is a pervert. Yeah. Like the funniest thing I saw from that that episode of um, Spider Man was when um, when Spider Man said um, he said this whole place is booby trapped and the Deadpool just started laughing and everybody's like oh he's laughing at the word booby and he said ah you said traps like kind of throwing everybody off almost yeah like he's that he's just that type of person yeah Deadpool is the kazoo of the Flintstones. Well, he's yeah. the kazoo of the Marvel Universe because the kazoo was that man, that that type of person in the Flintstones. And the Flintstones is, actually wasn't a kid cartoon to begin with. Mm-mm. Start off as a cigarette advertisement. Yep. Most people back didn't then, realize that. But back then, like, it wasn't a thing for, like, you know, you was four, 13, 14, 15 smoking a cigarette. Nobody really cared back then. So it really didn't matter. Betty Boop wasn't a kid cartoon, but we still watched it because it was at that time when Nickelodeon, well, we wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and the cartoon that was still on, and it was there. You had Betty Boop, you had Papa out of Cellar Man, mm-hmm. uh, Felix, not Felix the Cat, what's the other, other cat name? Oh, I can't think of his fucking name. Uh, but we had, we had those, those type of cartoons. You had Mighty Mouse and Adam Ant and you know Mighty Mouse was originally supposed to be a bug. He then was. They, then they switched it and then made him a mouse. I can't. I don't remember the whole backstory, but I was watching Toy Hunter the other day, and he was talking about the the origins of uh, Mighty Mouse, and I'm like, <sighs> Mighty Mouse was a parody of uh, Superman. A lot of cartoons are a parody of Superman. Like Underdog was. I couldn't stand Underdog. Underdog too. Cartoon, I would like to see them redo the Hong Kong Fui. Yeah, Hanna Barbera style, whatever cartoon. Uh, Hong Kong Fui was a part uh, parody of um, what's the dude name that was in um, Enter the Dragon with um, Bruce Lee. What's the Jim guy? Kelly? Jim Kelly. Mm-hmm. He's a parody of Jim Kelly. Most people won't realize it, but he was he was a, a parody of Jim Kelly in a way. Which is cool because we never had really a lot of cartoons unless uh, that played African American people. Uh, mm-hmm. We're not making this a race thing, but it's it's it's, it's, it's history. It's in a, it's in the mm-hmm. track record until we mm-hmm. came with Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo broke a lot of barriers for a lot of things. Mm-hmm. But Scooby Doo was the first cartoon that had the Glue Trotters on their. Their show, yeah. Their show. They had them on a couple episodes. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Globe Trotters came to have their own TV show. What was it, Super Globe Trotters? Yeah, I used to watch that all the time. They were, like a, they were like a sports version of the Impossibles. Mm-hmm. Frankenstein Jr. and the Impossibles. They were like a, 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 a sports version of it. And then you had the, um, Michael Jordan had his own cartoon at one point. With um, mm-hmm. Bo Jackson and what's and what's the hockey dude name? The white guy. I don't remember. Um, Gretzky. Yeah, Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. That's when ABC had all them cartoons, but uh, I think Cartoon Network bought Hanna Barbera and check. I think Cartoon Network already already had Tex Avery, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. because you remember like they used to have the Chuck Jones and. Tex mm-hmm. Avery, and then you had the Looney Tunes. Like, Bugs and Daffy will always be the the spokespeople for Looney Tunes. Because mm-hmm. they had their own cartoon show. Bugs and yeah. Daffy was a great t- cartoon. I remember when, I think it was like around Easter time, they always had like that whole special with them. Mm-hmm. But, I don't know, man. And then, Looney Tunes was another cartoon that broke the barriers with as far as like superhero like cartoon characters turned into superhero because you remember Bugs Bunny was Superman for a time. Mm-hmm. They did a crossover comic book issue. Then you had um. They actually did a thing. 
Mm-hmm. It was like a Justice League of, of Looney two characters. Like, and you remember McDonald's mm-hmm. had the the the, the toys. Um, yep. Donald, uh, not Donald Duck, but uh, Daffy Duck was Batman. Uh, Porgy Pig, he dressed him up like Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> it always did Porgy Pig dirty, though. Yep. And then Daffy Duck, he played a couple of roles. He did Duck Dodgers, which was a knockoff <laughs> of the original Green Lantern. And then he <laughs> did the Green Lantern. He was Green Lantern Daffy Duck for a while. Yeah, I was going to say, he actually, Duck Dodgers actually met um Green Lantern. It- So it's like, it's and then we not even gonna get into the Simpsons. Simpsons is definitely not a kid cartoon. He, he, Bart at a prayer uh, party. Uh, Bartman was a uh, parody of um, Batman. Mm-hmm. Like comic books, people laugh when I say I still read comic books, but I'm like comic books is the reason why we have some of the cartoons today, and. Mm-hmm. Comic books have a big influence on a lot of things nowadays, to be honest. If you read comic books and you read it, like, it's like, this shit crazy because some of the stuff deals with modern day life, but they made it comic book form or cartoon form. Like, is it possible that we can have Roll Live TMNT Turtles? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Could you, and we can have somebody like, uh, what, Captain America? Possibly, mm-hmm. yeah. Winter yeah. Soldier, yeah, because that's definitely possible. A robotic mm-hmm. arm and shit, because bu- that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's who it is, it's Bucky. Yeah. So you had somebody like Red Skull? Yeah, mm-hmm. we did. Hitler was Red Skull, basically. Yeah, basically, how they had him. Uh, they go on and on about it, but the classic cartoons, which will always be there and if you're a younger person re- watching this video or you watch my videos you should go back and watch the older cartoons before you even get into the new ones like go back and watch the older x-men the older spider-man older batman the older sonic go you can go on netflix netflix got most of these cartoons yeah, exactly and like you know what's real big like you know you made it big when you get on netflix pokemon is on netflix now Yep. The first season, like the season that we grew up on. Yep. And you know you also make it big when you get a Lego line. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Then when I find out that WWE has a Lego line now, I'm like, oh, they finally made it. I mean, they made it years ago, but now you're on Lego. Mm-hmm. Like, See, you're really back in the mainstream, kind of. I mean, like, you're on the level, like, TMNT has Lego lines. They have a couple mm-hmm. legal lines. Star Wars definitely has a big legal line. Mm-hmm. Um, Indiana Jones. Uh, who else? I'm ke- I can't think of any of the big product big product names. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the other one? Then um, Star Trek. Not Star Trek. Star Trek never had a legal line. Mm-mm. Oh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, actually, they did. They did. They did. Yeah, they did. It must have been the a old short Enterprise. Run. They got one for the old Enterprise or whatever. They got a Legos thing for that. Man, Legos been around for years, yo. Mm-hmm. I like then they the I like the whole thing they did with Marvel. They took Marvel and Legolized it, and it mm-hmm. made it funny and it made it kid friendly. And the other game they just came they came out with like last year it was called Lego City Undercover. It was basically Grand Theft Auto in kid form. Yeah. And like, and then you had like references to Starsky and Hutch, and a couple other things, man. It's like cartoons now today. It should take note of that and do that stuff, but they won't do it. They want to stick, like you said, SpongeBob is Nickelodeon's Mickey Mouse. He's never gonna go anywhere. Now when they got the property to TMNT. They're gonna keep making seasons of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have Digimon Fusion. I'm not sure they still they study. I don't know sure. I'm not sure they still run that. Mm-hmm. Um, they need to bring back Rugrats. They need to start syndicating the older stuff like Rugrats and reintroduce that to people. Rocket mm-hmm. Power. Yeah, Rocket, Rocket Power was the show that 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 was a good 
good show. I admit. I think it ended at the right time. I'm saying it ended too soon, but no, it ended was... at the right time. Yeah. Oh, and the wild thornberries. Yep. Uh, wasn't Doug on on Nickelodeon, or was that a Disney product? Um, it was Nickelodeon, and then Nickelodeon lost the rights and sold it to Disney. They sold it to Disney. Doug need to be re reintroduced. Uh, Rocco Modern Life. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cartoon Network need to bring back Two Stupid Dogs. Yeah. Cow and Chicken. Mm-hmm. Ducks and Laboratory. Uh, Johnny Bravo. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of stuff, man. That's a lot of stuff, man. It was actually going to make a Johnny Bravo movie, and they was considering The Rock to play Johnny Bravo. I don't see how that would have... They would have had him grow his hair out a little bit, kind of turn into a pompadour probably, and I don't know. It was only talk. They never had nothing big came out of it. It would have been stupid because I think the Two Fairy, when they did when Two Fairy movie came out, they kind of hurt his career a little bit. Yeah. But if you think about it, like when The Rock had the, remember when The Rock had hair and the pork chop sideburns, he did kind of have like that, um, that Johnny Bravo ish look to him a little bit. Yeah. On the glasses. He did rock the Johnny Bravo, the, the, the um, pork chop sideburns. And you know what's the crazy thing about The Rock? When he was younger and you had the, the chance to grow your sideburns like that, you would get the pork mm-hmm. chop sideburns. Yeah. And then he switched to the little the long point sideburns, yep. and then now he bald, right? Yep. Or he shaved his head to bald now. Exactly. Yeah, what you think about the new Scooby Doo movie, but the kid cartoon movie, but it's come off of WWE? Um, I guess it's a good way to. I don't know. I guess it's a good way to bring kids more into um wrestling who aren't already in it or whatever. Like, kind of give them a feel for it, but I don't, I just got to see how it goes. It could be good. I just got to see how it was executed. That's what it all boils down to. Like, yeah. is it just Scooby-Doo with just throwing wrestlers in there, or is it, like, basically the story center around everybody, and then they go with that? Hey, see, that's the, see, that's the thing about that, too, is, like, when I said about the legal line, you get the legal line, you meet it, but... Now, WWE is stepping into the world of cartoons, and you're introducing it to a cartoon that's been around for years. Mm-hmm. Scooby-Doo. And you stepping into that, and it's like, mm-hmm. y'all are really making it, because to, for you to be able to get the, the Hanna-Barbera, the, whoever's left of the Hanna-Barbera group, to mm-hmm. allow you to interact with Scooby-Doo, like, you got Kane. You got some of your big names in it. Of course, you got John Cena in it. You got mm-hmm. Kane, you supposedly have CM Punk in it. I'm not sure who else is in it, but... I mean, that's, it's not the first time WWE tried something like that. They did a thing back in the day when uh, the Ministry of Darkness with Undertaker. You remember he did a sci-fi special? I don't remember that. I don't even remember that, really. Yeah, a lot of people don't remember that. He did a sci-fi special. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's like... I think that's a big move for them, though. I hope it's, I hope it don't flop. Yeah, exactly. Cause like, from what I hear, like I know Vince is always thinking about the future. Like he's always thinking about what he can do next to grow his franchise, which is good for a businessman standpoint. So like, like of course now that you know wrestling's good, we got to get wrestling back into the multimedia. Like you think about, remember Mr. T used to have his own show. Hulk Hogan used to have his own show at one point. Yeah. I mean, and, and I'm not saying that wrestling, like, if Vince want to do that, Vince should just do a, a, a cartoon version of WWE. Make it kid friendly. Uh, like, I mean, we had wrestling uh, cartoons before. We had Mucha Lucha. Lucha. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, it was another one that was on Kids WB. It was like... Um, Ultimate Muscle? Yeah, Ultimate Muscle. Ultimate Muscle was not a kid friendly cartoon because it had too much to do with the butt. <laughs> yeah. It was it was like it pushed the limit and it, it kind of mm-hmm. reminded me of Road Warriors like I was talking about on a uh, other video. Mm-hmm. And how Blitz always had a fascination with butts. Ultimate also was a good cartoon though. Mucha Lucha 
it ended too early. And then you had the sumo wrestling car- uh, cartoon. Remember that one? But Super Duper Sumo? Yeah. It was all, That show was alright. They just didn't know where to go with it, I don't think. It was stupid. Mm-hmm. It, came right, it was like a full episode. Like, you had Study Shock, and then you had... Between that, you had that, and uh, Mucha Mucha... No, Shaolin Showdown. Mm-hmm. And then you had uh, Batman... Um, Brave and Bold, Bold, whatever the fuck the name of that shit was. Because animated series, well, that's way after animated series, Batman animated series. Because animated series is the first. Pre- that was like in the nineties, yeah, early nineties. That was shown. On, it wasn't shown on Cartoon Network. It was shown on. Uh, mm-hmm. It was shown on the Kids WB, right? Um. Yeah, and then they showed they showed later episodes on Cartoon Network though. Like, Batman always had a great cartoon series. Like, mm-hmm. after Justice JLA, like, the, the barn ass version of Batman and the Super mm-hmm. Friends and shit. Yeah, that the anime series, you had Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond was fucking dark, yo. Yeah, it was. Batman Beyond. Yo, what's going on, YouTube? Right around this point of the video, we had some audio problems for some reason. It stopped recording the audio when he was talking, so sorry about that, but um, like, comment, subscribe, share this with your friends.
Production.